Hey, what is going on everybody? It's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another video on the Xbox Series X. So in the previous videos, I've showed you guys how to disassemble the console, reassemble the console. But in this video, I wanted to show you guys what happens if you take the SSD from the Series X and plug it into a computer. Does it work on your computer? Does it use some kind of special proprietary format where the drive's not accessible or it's encrypted? Can you access the files? Can you you know, reconfigure the drive to just use it as a boot drive for your computer or, or as a storage drive on your computer. Because, hey, a one terabyte NVMe drive is pretty damn decent to have on your computer. And also, would it be possible to potentially upgrade the Series X SSD in future so that you could take a higher capacity SSD, like a two terabyte or three terabyte drive, which we might start seeing um, in the future for a reasonable price? Uh, when that happens, could you use one of those drives in your Series X and actually upgrade the internal storage instead of having to buy those Seagate expansion cards? So that's what we're going to be checking out here in this video. So the first thing I'm going to do is take out the SSD from uh, the Series X motherboard here and try and plug it into an NVMe slot in my computer. I don't actually have an NVMe slot the right size for the Series X SSD. I'm not sure if the SSD in the Series X is some kind of proprietary size that's much smaller than normal NVMe drives. It is smaller than most NVMe drives, but maybe some um, are actually that same small form factor. So you could possibly replace it in future with a higher capacity one. But uh, we're going to take that out and try and just plug it into the slot anyway, even though I can't screw it in. And we'll see uh, if this actually works here on my computer. So I'm just going to take out the screw here and take out this uh, kind of heat sink for the NVMe drive. And then I'm going to put the Xbox Series X uh, NVMe drive on top of the heat sink like this. And then just slot it into the computer, put the screw back in, and then we'll boot up the computer here and see what happens. Okay, so switching over to the computer here, as you can see, if I head to disk management, the drive is accessible. This is it down here, disk number three. So there's a one gigabyte raw partition here. Then all the other ones are NTFS partitions, apart from one gigabyte of unallocated space at the end. And it looks pretty much the same as an Xbox One hard drive. You've got 26 gigabytes um, for temporary content. You've got an 802 gigabyte user content partition a 18 gigabyte uh, system support partition, a 12 gigabyte system update partition, and a seven gigabyte system update two partition. And obviously the user content partition is where all of your games and apps and updates and everything you download onto the system, that's where that goes. Of course, that's why it shows up as 802 gigabytes, even when you first boot up your Series X and you only see like 800 gigabytes available space, even though it shows on the box that it's a one terabyte NVMe drive, um, it is a one terabyte drive. The only reason you only have 800 gigs available from the start is because the rest of the space is uh, separated into these other partitions. And obviously the system update partition, that's where the operating system files go. So if we take a look here, because they're NTFS partitions, they are accessible on the computer. So we've got temporary content, which just has a bunch of XVD files in there. We've got uh, the user content partition, which obviously has a bunch of other files in here. Uh, this one right here, the 23 gigabyte file, that is most likely going to be my uh, Crash Nitro Fueled installation, the only game I have installed on the system right now. That's most likely the file for that. So it's not any particular format. Uh, then we've got Shared Storage, which has nothing in it right now. PLS has nothing in there either. Then we have the System Support Partition, which has a font file, a bunch of other XVD files. Um, and of course, it's got this uh, ODD firmware update folder in here there's a bunch of logs talking about um you know failed updates and stuff and things things not going right um or maybe i'm just misinterpreting this but um it's got stuff like odd firmware update failed and then odd firmware update finished so not sure what that's about when i did first boot up the console i did get two system updates one for the controller and one for the system obviously and uh, i didn't get any issues doing the system updates so not sure what that's about um, but yeah so you've got a couple of log files there so then we have the system update partition so this is where all the operating system files go and unfortunately it does look like uh, it's the same as the xbox one where if the drive failed um, then you wouldn't be able to boot up the xbox series x just like the xbox one if the hard drive fails you can't even boot into the troubleshoot options because critical operating system files that are required for the system to boot 
are, st are stored on the hard drive or in this case on the SSD. Um, so that is unfortunate because back in the Xbox 360 days, the Xbox 360 could boot without a hard drive. If you took the hard drive out, it would still turn on and boot into the dashboard and you could use like a USB drive, a configured USB as storage or a memory card as storage, which it doesn't look like you can do with the Series X because the operating system files are on the NVMe drive. So if the SSD failed, then you're not going to be able to boot up the system at all. So that's unfortunate if that is the case, which it does appear to be. Um, but obviously I haven't tested that uh, yet. So yeah, that's where we stand right there with the operating system files. Now, if you were wanting to upgrade this drive to a new drive, or if this drive failed and you got a, a new NVMe drive, the same form factor to use in your Series X, then you would have to create all of these partitions that are the same size with the correct label, you know, user content, system support, system update, etc. And then in the system update partition, you would put the operating system files, which you could just, just download from uh, uh, Xbox support by looking to download an offline system update. So you just download this OSU1 file right here. Uh, OSU1, you click that and download it. And then you just copy the files. You create an A and B folder in the system update partition. You copy all the files into the A folder and the B folder. And then these XVD files uh, you would copy out to the root of the drive, the root of the partition. And then, yeah, the drive should hopefully work in your Series X after that. And of course, you could probably just use the, the Xbox HDD master script to create the partitions for you, since it looks to be pretty much the same as the uh, Xbox One hard drive anyway. So, yeah, that's basically it. So if we take a look at uh, some speed tests. So I did a quick test with Crystal Disk Mark. Obviously, this is not the most accurate um, measurements, but uh, looking at it as gigabits per second or gigabytes per second, rather, um, you can see that we're only getting about 1.5, 1.6, somewhere between one and one, one and one and a half, basically, uh, gigabytes a second on read and writes, which is interesting because the drive says on the Series X that it's it can do 2.4, up to 2.4 gigabytes a second uh, raw and about 4.8 compressed. Um, whereas this is only getting up to about one, one and a half gigabytes per second when it's in the computer. But that could just be to do with the, the PCI um, Express uh, that I have in the computer. And it could also be to do with some, uh, you know, other optimizations that are made specifically in the Series X to work with the SSD to get more out of it than what you can get if you just put the SSD in a computer. So that's interesting. We're only getting, we're getting significantly less read and write speeds apparently than what we're, what the drive is capable of when it's in the Series X, um, but still very good results for just a, an NVMe drive in general. Uh, nothing, nothing wrong with using this drive if you wanted to reformat the whole thing and just use it as a boot drive for your computer or a storage drive for your computer. It's, you know, it's a one terabyte NVMe drive, so why not? So yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty good. So yeah, that's basically it, guys. That's what happens when you put a Xbox Series X drive in the computer just as a little experiment and I'll be doing other little experiments as well we might try and uh, take a PS5 uh, drive and put it in the computer and see what we get with that um, probably the same as the PS4 hard drive where it'll use some proprietary format and won't be readable but we'll have a look anyway we might see if we can put the Xbox Series X SSD in a PS5 and see if it complains that the, that the drive is too slow which it probably will do um, so just some fun little experiments we might do there as well and of course, I've got a lot more hardware stuff coming uh, as well. Tearing down the PS5, reassembling the PS5, uh, swapping out LEDs on the on the controllers and on the power LED for the Series X. Uh, we'll probably try and install some LED strips in the in the Series X as well. See if we can get some LED light coming out of those holes at the top instead of just that green bit of plastic. Um, so yeah, quite a lot of stuff coming down uh, the pipeline soon on the channel. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, please stay subscribed and uh, keep on the lookout for that ring the bell for uh, notifications so anyway hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful if you did please leave a like and subscribe and i'll hopefully see you guys in the next one